Coming up on this episode of Falmouth in Focus, we check out a volunteer initiative to improve the homes of those in need, visit a community-held demonstration in support of diversity, and stop by an explosive open house. All this and much more on this edition of Falmouth in Focus. Hello and welcome to Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm Michael Kasparian, president of the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce. We start this episode with the eighth annual Big Fix, a community service event coordinated by Housing Assistance Corporation. Here, local volunteers make home and landscaping improvements for seniors, the disabled, and veterans on Cape Cod. The Big Fix changes location each year, and this one in Falmouth was their biggest yet. Good morning, Big Fixers! We are so happy to see you here this morning. We have 19 homes, so there are 19 families that are either veterans or seniors or living with a disability that can't keep up with all the chores around their house, you know? So we have about 300 volunteers that come out on one day and, and go through that punch list for people. We might be cleaning brush, trimming bushes, mowing lawn, we're, we're cleaning out that basement for folks. Uh, sometimes we have real construction projects, so we have skilled labor that will come in so that folks can stay in place and age in place or stay living in place in a safe, secure house. It's a great event. I'm glad that the Housing Assistance Corporation has reached out and organized this so that we can join in and, and, and be good neighbors and help each other out. I've lived in this house for 26 years. Number one, to get my life back together again here with the mess I have. And we're removing all the things that we don't need anymore. With all this stuff removed, I'm free to get around the house in my condition I'm in. And a lot more space available. We've got about 25 volunteers, some from different Home Depots around the Cape. And um, some people from Sotheby's International Realty and some other volunteers from the Valley Group. We're doing some brush removal. Um, they're fixing the front steps, a lot of stuff. It's just so wonderful, and I think that Mr. Martin feels good, but even better than Mr. Martin is I think all the volunteers feel so great about helping him. It's a real feel-good activity. And what a great day today to be able to, uh, to come out here and give a smile and clean up a little bit. So uh, outstanding day to be able to work for a great organization that provides this type of service to the veterans. They're lifesavers. I can't uh, express how fortunate I am to have people like this that live in this community and the other communities to help out like this. It's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, really. It means more than we could say or pay because it's been a long time. We always did things ourselves and now we can't. And these wonderful people and especially the kids working real hard, really hard. There is no way to measure the value of all these volunteers. Yeah. It's community involvement, and it's great that there are people who will do that. Thank you. I've said that a hundred times this morning, and that's, that's all I can say. For more information on The Big Fix, visit haconcapecod.org. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that coverage. Hundreds of people came out to the Village Green on October 1st to stand up against racism, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia as part of the March for Racial Justice. Participants heard thought-provoking and inspiring testimony from a number of people whose lives have been impacted by bigotry. FCTV was there to bring you this coverage. We're here today at a terrific event. It was packed, an event put on by Engage Falmouth to really engage our community on issues of social justice, racial inequality, and economic inequality. And we heard from a lot of terrific speakers today about their personal, uh, very personal experiences about the prejudice they've faced in our local community. Uh, so I, I came here today to share my story because I think a lot of people in the United States and especially in more liberal states like Massachusetts, try to um, hide racism or Islamophobia and, you know, kind of just 
brush it under the rug, but it exists and we need to acknowledge that this exists and it's a problem. I can't tell you how many interactions I've had with people who say, we're so lucky to live here, um, it's a blue bubble, everyone is so liberal and there aren't any problems like there are in the South or like there are in those big cities. When I personally have had very painful um, interactions over race living here. You know, I, as someone who comes from uh, uh, a family that immigrated here from the Azores and from Puerto Rico, um, you know, uh, uh, it's really important that we stand up for all people, especially our immigrant communities, um, uh, African American community, uh, you know, our communities. Um, of Native Americans. Everyone in this country is an immigrant. The only people that aren't immigrants are people who came here uh, through slavery and also the Native Americans. So it's important that we stick up for everyone in our country. And I do want to say that um, if, 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 you know, apathy, just not, not being involved, nobody stood up for us. Nobody said, hey, excuse me, sir, that's extremely Stop that. Don't do that. There were many people standing around and they didn't intervene. And that is just as bad as the, the violence and the aggression. If you don't speak up and stand up for other people, this makes it okay. And it's not okay. It's not okay to express aggress a, a, aggression against another person. It's not a, okay to, ex to hate people and to outwardly hate it. We need to be building bridges. So, um... Uh, please, please do learn from my experience and speak up. Don't be apathetic. Don't ignore it. Don't just feel like it's wrong in your heart. Say something. S speak up against it and say, no, this is wrong. Stop that. The Falmouth March for Racial Justice was coordinated by Engage Falmouth in collaboration with the Coalition for Social Justice, No Place for Hate Falmouth, Falmouth Racial Justice League, the Cape Verdean Club, and more. You can watch the march in its entirety on FCTV Channel 13. Thank you to Alan Russell for bringing us that coverage. Supporters of Nobska Light held a groundbreaking ceremony on September 15th, although they came with paintbrushes rather than shovels. A new, historically accurate paint job marks the first phase of the lighthouse's renovation work and is expected to be complete by late November. It's not a typical groundbreaking because we're, the physical work that we're doing is on the structure itself. We are not changing the grounds at all at the moment. We are working very hard on the tower to bring it up to good shape so that it will continue to be our wonderful beloved icon for Falmouth and look, put our best foot forward and look great for the community. Um, this is phase one. As we start, we'll get the tower done and then we'll turn our attentions to the keeper's house, which we will be converting into a museum. So we've wrapped it to provide a controlled environment for the work that has to take place because we're replacing glass, we're replacing rusted out parts, we are, um, the lens is very much in a, in a special box and protected and well cared for but there are parts that the windows needed to come out so they could be worked on. And so to do all that kind of work, we needed a controlled environment. And so they have wrapped it all. They will also be working on the outside of the tower and sandblasting it and repainting it. And the wrap gives them a controlled environment for that. And so it's, it's hard because it's covered up and it's not acting as the aid, aid to navigation that it should be. And this though means that we can get it in good shape so that it can continue to serve its purpose for years and years to come. The tower will be ready and reopened for Christmas by the Sea weekend for caroling. Thanks to Alan Russell for that coverage. There are always topics to report on from Town Hall, and this week is no exception. Here are some updates from recent municipal meetings chosen based on community impact. At the Selectman's meeting of September 25th, Department of Public Works Director Ray Jack gave an update to the water and wastewater projects in Falmouth. Mr. Jack commented that he would not be discussing the wastewater project at this time because the project is complete and the water superintendent will be giving a full report to the Selectman regarding that project. 
Mr. Jack went on to discuss the Long Pond facility construction, reporting some difficulty in permitting the new water filtration plant, acquiring the appropriate operator levels, and the state DEP being concerned over the automation aspect of that plant. Mr. Jack explained these setbacks are being addressed, and he believes the plant will go online in October. It was good design. It was good construction. It really was a lot of good teamwork across the board. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, this plant, not only from a design, construction, implementation perspective, but also operationally, uh, is going to set the mode for the future for other plants of this type. Uh, it really is that sophisticated. It was built as a thoroughbred. At the same meeting, the selectmen went through the fall 2017 town meeting warrant and voted their recommendations to each article necessary. The selectmen heard presentations from many members of the public regarding each petitioner's article in the 2017 fall warrant. The selectmen asked many questions and had a lot of discussion amongst themselves while voting recommendations, namely the question of electronic voting versus a standing roll call vote, whether or not to make a recommendation on Article 13 since it is a Finance Committee article, and the Kunameset Rivers Petitioner's article. This article per pertains not just to the land that is subject to the restoration already in place, but also to the upper sections that are not currently part of it. So, you know, it's rhetorically, it runs contradictory to the grants that we're applying for. It may not be have a legally binding effect, mm -hmm. but it you know, it, sends a mixed it might send a mixed mm -hmm. message. In this past Monday night's meeting, the selectmen met to discuss and recommend the article on the special town meeting warrant regarding the retail sale of recreational marijuana in Falmouth. Town manager Julian Suso gave a brief history of this article and introduced a scheduling change of the special town meeting to be held Monday night, November 6th at 7.30. The selectmen voted to recommend the article as printed with the date and time changes. Do we have to have a different vote to declare the meeting November 7th? It, 6th and 7th, November 7th? As long as you vote to uh, accept this warrant, it has that date and time on it, listed on it. Okay. And that is consistent with what the board would sign off on with the public notification. So in talking to town council, that would be adequate. We've also uh, consulted with town clerk to uh, ensure that you'd be acting consistent with the town charter, which has been confirmed. Well, I would move that we put Article 1 as presented to us on the November 6th Monday special town meeting warrant. Second. Second. Sorry. No, that's right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 To watch any of these meetings in their entirety, please visit FCTV's website at fctv.org. Right now, we're going to take a short break to learn about an adoptable cat from People for Cats. When we come back, we'll stop by Joint Base Cape Cod and learn about the Falmouth Police Department's new partnership to combat breast cancer. Stay with us. Here we have. Spiro and Jackie, male and female. They're both eight years old. Their owner could no longer take care of them, so they've come to us. They're very sweet. Hey, baby. Hi. Look at that face. Look at that face. Oh. Oh. They have to go together. They've been with each other for eight years, so um, that is a must. So come down to the shelter and uh, check these little kids out. And maybe uh, they'll block out and you can uh, adopt them. Thank you. For more information about Jackie and Spiro, please call us at 508-540-5654, visit peopleforcats.org, or come in during adoption hours. Welcome back. In celebration of the Yankee Division's 100th anniversary, the 26th Infantry recently held an open house at Camp Edwards. Members of the public were invited to step inside the grounds of the base and experience what military life is like through demonstrations and reenactments. Good morning, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Bertone. I'm the operations officer here at Camp Edwards down on Bourne and Falmouth in Sandwich, Massachusetts. And right now we have our Camp Edwards 2017 open house happening. What we do is we support OCAC, which is the Otis Citizens Advisory Council, and they raise revenue for soldiers, airmen, and sailors on the base, and they give it to the young kids how they need it, and they distribute it to make sure that they have some assistance if required. Uh, my name is Joe Kelly. The base behind me is uh, named in memory of my son, Michael, who was killed in Afghanistan in um, 
June uh, 8, 2005. He was killed in action, and the Nas Mass Massachusetts National Guard built this base as uh, a replication of what the soldiers that are going to be deployed will expect to see and live in when they go to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, the purpose for this base is prior to the building of this base, the danger zone, as they called it, when the soldier was deployed, was 35 days. If they can live beyond 35 days, they were going to be okay, more or less. Because of this base, those 35 days are now close to 100 days, so they remove that danger zone. We reach out to the reenactor world. What's wonderful about the reenactors, because they're in high demand, when you get them, they give you like a space and time and a snapshot of history, and they play their roles 100% to be authentic. I'm uh, Lauren Andrews. I'm a private, and we're here with Battery B, First Rhode Island Light Artillery, working in conjunction with uh, the Mounted Artillery of New England. We're a uh, Civil War Living History unit uh, based in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, we're, today we've been firing a um, Model 1841 12-pound James rifle. Uh, we've been pulling the team out with a, with a four-up team, which was a peacetime hitch during the Civil War. All of the harness and uh, accoutrements are authentic to the period. My name is Patrick O'Brien. I'm from Warren, Rhode Island. We're out here today at Otis Air Force Base, Camp Edwards, uh, doing a timeline history event. Uh, the regiment I do is Royal Ulster Rifles. It was part of the first air landing. And the first uh, combat they went into was uh, the invasion of Normandy. So we do this to invite the public onto our installation because everybody drives around the base. It encompasses 25,000 acres, but you really don't know what we do here. So we open up our tactical training base, Kelly, and we invite people in and they get to see military equipment, reenactors, aviators, and then we have concessions and we have fun things for the children and military equipment, active today stuff on display as well. Thanks to Tony Sidera for that story. It's estimated that approximately one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lives, a condition which profoundly impacts patients and their loved ones. In this next piece, FCTV speaks with Falmouth Police Department Chief Ed Dunn about how and why the department got involved in raising awareness. Hi, I'm Chief Dunn, and I'm here today to talk to you about a program that I'm starting here in the Falmouth Police Department and it's called the Pink Patch Project. Some of you might be wondering, what is the Pink Patch Project? Well, it's a, it's a breast cancer awareness program, and it actually started in Seal Beach, California, um, at a police department in 2013. And that department wanted to take what we probably all are familiar with is the Pink Ribbon Campaign, which is uh, cancer aware breast cancer awareness. Um, and, and they changed the color of their uniform patches, similar to what we hear, the shoulder patches, ours are yellow, to a pink patch like this one here. And they replaced their, they replaced their uh, shoulder patches with, with, this, with, with a pink one. Uh, last year, there were 87 police departments nationwide that participated in the pink patch project. And I happened to be at a, a seminar and I happened to see a, another police chief and saw his patch was pink. And I said, wow, that's kind of different. Um, so I started talking with him and he explained that it, it, it was, has to do with the Pink Patch Project. So I did some research. The Pink Patch Project, again, like I say, has to do with breast cancer awareness. And it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the month of October. So I decided this year that the Falmouth Police Department would participate in the Pink Patch Project. What we're doing here in Falmouth is this. During the month of October, I am allowing the Falmouth Police officers to change their shoulder patches from the yellow that we have to this pink patch here. And we actually redesigned this patch because what we added to it was the cancer ribbons. Our, our normal patch doesn't have that. We are also um, have uh, ball caps with the pink patch. We took, took our logo and had it done in pink and it also has the breast cancer ribbon on the back. Um, these are commemorative items and they can be purchased at the Falmouth Police Department during business hours. The patches are $10. That's 
the hats a 20. By purchasing these items, I have partnered with the Cape Cod Healthcare Cancer Center, the CIFR Women Imaging Center here in Falmouth, and all proceeds from the sales of the patches in the hats, I will be giving them a check in November to go towards cancer research and development. If we can do something to help bring that awareness forward, I want to do that. And we were the 135th police department to sign on to the uh, Pink Patch Project. Today, I believe there's close, there's well over 150 departments nationwide, and we are the only police department on Cape Cod participating in the Pink Patch Project. If you want to help uh, bring awareness, help support uh, research and, and, and things like that, purchase a Pink Patch. Thanks to Jeff Wyman for bringing us this important piece. We now move to this episode's calendar segment where we have a number of events to highlight. On October 13th at 7.30 p.m., the John Wesley United Methodist Church brings back their Old Time Gospel Night, featuring sacred bluegrass, spirituals, and classic hymns led by John Yankee and the OTG String Band. On October 22nd, starting at 8 a.m., the Surf Drive Bathhouse will mark the start of the first Kerwin Murray Memorial Bike Ride. Running a similar route to the Falmouth Marathon, this 29-mile ride benefits the Falmouth Homeless Prevention Program helping Falmouth individuals and families stay in their homes. On October 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m., Falmouth Museums on the Green brings back the popular Visit from the Night Watchman, where the public is invited to mingle with the spirits of Falmouth's past in this haunted experience come to life. Lastly, we have Wet Paint, an exhibition of David Rogers' oil, charcoal, and pastel pieces, viewable at the Mesa Gallery here at FCTV throughout October. We're going to take another short break, and when we come back, we'll learn about a new program at Falmouth High School. Stay with us. Welcome back. High school can be a challenging and stressful time for many students. In response, Falmouth High School has created Clipper Time, a block for students to seek and receive extra help, intervention, support, enrichment, or extension. In this next segment, we learn all about this beneficial program. These came up with a great concept of implementing Clipper Time, which is a 33-minute period at the same time every day where all students meet with teachers for extra help, support, um, studying for a test, anything. I think the real benefit of Clipper Time is that uh, it, it's it gives increased and improved learning opportunities for all levels of students. Um, we have plenty of students who need to rush right home after school, get off the bus to pick up a younger sibling, um, who work to help out their families. Um, and it's an opportunity for those students during the school day to get the help from the teachers that they need in a timely manner. On the other end of the spectrum, we have plenty of students who take four AP classes, are three sport athletes, are involved in every club after school, and uh, have overscheduled themselves. And again, it's an opportunity for those students and everyone in between uh, that wide spectrum that we see every day at Falmouth High to get what they need from teachers when they need it uh, in a timely manner and within the school day. I think one of the advantages of Clipper Time is, is truly what it is, extra time to spend with certain kids. And that can be your super duper AP flying student or the student who is struggling. It works both ways. And having them both in the classroom at the same time can be such an advantage. The other thing is that I don't really see it as an extra teaching period. I think some people maybe do. I don't. Um, I see it as after school help inside the class inside the, the day. And I think that helps me. Um, sometimes I wish it was longer, sometimes I wish it was shorter. <laughs> um, but overall, my, the, as an English teacher, my writing days are more chaotic, but it's a good chaotic. Um, I'm running around, I'm touching base with students, and it feels like I'm lowering everybody's level of concern in that 33 minutes. I think it's helped the kids themselves have more time during their day to reach out to the teachers that they need help with and isolate that in case they can't stay after school, um, not just because of sports, but because of work or family commitments. So it's opened up another option for them. Uh, I think it's very useful. Like, like sometimes not finish your homework at night, you can always do it during that, that time period. If, if you don't understand any questions, you can ask that teacher. 
So it helps you with like with that one-on-one -on -one experience with your teacher that you don't have in the regular class time. Thanks to Ryan Weber for that story. FCTV recently held an opening reception for North Falmouth artist David Rogers at our own Mazer Gallery. Troy Clarkson was there to talk to visitors and the artist himself. Here's Troy's take. Today, we're right back where we started, right here at FCTV, to see an opening of an art exhibit at the Mazer Gallery. And today, we get to see a very special artist and someone who's very special to FCTV. David Rogers, the husband of FCTV Executive Director Deb Rogers, is here sharing his work, his passion, his art with the people of Falmouth. So come on in with us and let's take a look. So Linda, we're looking at not only artwork that's beautiful and very well done, but the variants of it, from portraits to sunsets to painting on a, on a gold sifting plate. Uh, what do you think about this exhibit here? Well, first of all, the man is multi-talented. There's no question about it. And in everything he does, you see him. I mean, you see his heart and soul in everything he does. So Stan, in your work throughout the town with the dog park and the carousel of light, you really get an opportunity to see the best of what Falmouth has to offer. Today, in this exhibit, of the artwork of David Rogers, again, you get to see the best of what Falmouth has to offer. Well, first of all, I had no idea Dave was this talented. I've been doing it for years, so to me, I'm in total shock. This is beautiful work. Uh, and the subjects, his, his daughter, his Deb, uh, the space uh, capsule, it's just beautiful. So David, it's wonderful that so many people have gathered here, not to only to celebrate your artwork, but really to celebrate you. Well, thank you for coming. It, it's, it's really uh, kind of a big event. This is my second show here in about 20 years, so it's pretty exciting. It's a little dizzying. Tell us about the, this work here. So this is an actual a, a gold pan from Alaska. Yep, yep. yep. I, I went to Alaska a couple times in my life, uh, 1970, and went back in 1976. And at that time, there was a woman painting at the local uh, J.C. Penney, and she's painting gold pans. So they have this this size here, and it's multiple sizes, larger sizes. And it's actually meant for gold pan panning for gold in a brook. There are little ridges on the bottom of it. And so I said, well, I think I can do that. So I just picked up some acrylic paints and some gold pans and started painting them. One of the things that's evident in your work, because it's so varied, is that your personality, your truth, and your love for so many things, from space travel to nature to your family, comes out through your work. And, and that's rare, and that's pretty special. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my earlier drawings I did as a kid uh, were really based on people, faces of um, importance in my life at the time. Well, it's phenomenal work, and, uh, you know, thank you for coming here and not only sharing your artwork, but your truth and your passion with us here in Falmouth. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thanks. So this artwork here, this display of David Rogers, not only shows his talent and his abilities, but his truth and his passion. This is his latest work, one that was unveiled today, and it shows the shuttle Challenger just before it exploded uh, in that just poignant moment in American history. And he captures the essence of it so well. I'm Falmouth Enterprise columnist Troy Clarkson, and that's my take. Back to you. Thanks to Troy Clarkson and Donna Buckley for that segment. Here at FCTV, we want you to know that television can be as easy as hitting record on your smartphone. We'd like to invite all Falmouth residents and visitors to share their slice of life with us. Email us your photos and videos, or upload them to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag MyFalmouth or Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show. Thank you to our most recent contributors. We leave you now with the sights and sounds of Sunset at the Knob. Thanks for watching Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time.